In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a cinema graph using Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So before we jump into Premiere, I first just need to make sure that you have the correct footage. So first of all, place your camera on a tripod and set all your settings to manual and make sure that your lighting is the same and consistent. So you want to go ahead and find something that's going to move. So in my example, you can see I'm holding a bottle of fizzy pop or soda and I'm just pouring this into the mug. Now, the reason why I'm using a mug in this example as opposed to a glass is because if we were using a glass, you would see right through that glass and see that the liquid isn't going to fill up. So I'm using a mug to hide that and therefore the pouring is going to be the part that will loop. Of course, in your example, you don't have to use this soda bottle. You could use uh, waterfall footage, you could use traffic footage, anything that's moving, anything that you can isolate and then freeze the rest of the frame will work for the cinema graph effect. So with all of that said and done, let's jump into Premiere and I'll show you how to do this effect. So as you can see, we're inside of Premiere and this is our first clip. This is just me pouring the drink into the mug here. And this is the part that I want to freeze frame. And then I want to take this bit and loop this. So this is the bit that I'm focused on here. So I can get rid of the beginning and just start here. So I'll press C on the keyboard to load the razor tool and make a cut there. Then we'll move across to the point where I start to move again. So here, press C, make a cut, and then we'll delete the first and the end of that bit. So we've just got this one video clip here, like so. So what we want to do is we want to freeze frame the video except for this pouring part here. So in order to do that, I'm first just going to hold option on the keyboard and drag that clip up to make a copy. If that doesn't work for you though, then you can always just select that, go Command or Control C, move over, Command and Control V, and drag that onto video layer two. So with that copied, we can now just go ahead and turn off the video on video layer two, and we'll focus on video layer one, and this is going to be our freeze frame layer. So we're just going to pull the cursor to the very beginning of our sequence, we'll right click that video, and then you can see we've got insert frame hold segment, and we've got add frame hold. I'm gonna go for add frame hold, and as you can see, that is going to freeze that video. So we've got this frozen video, which is perfect. And then now we can turn on video layer two. We can create a mask around this part. So the pouring part, feel free to zoom in by the way, if that makes your life easier. So we're just gonna go opacity, select the free draw bezier tool, and we'll just draw a mask around the part of the frame that should be moving. So let's go for this. Now, when we play this back, you'll notice we've got this issue here. The bottle is moving, and that's because we've got a frozen video on video layer one, and then we've got this moving up here on video layer two. So what I would recommend, rather than creating the mask around this bit here, if we pull the mask across and have it at the point where the liquid is pouring from the bottle, so somewhere around here, that should be a lot easier to manage. There you go, see that looks a lot better now. Of course, so you can see it is starting to drift down here, which is not great. So what I would recommend doing is going into that mask again, and we're just going to update that mask again one more time. So rather than focusing on the bottom, I'm just going to focus more on the liquid pouring like this. As you can see, again, it's not perfect. It's disconnecting from here. So we'll go into mask one, mask feather, and we'll increase the mask feather just a little bit to soften that up. And that should look a bit better now. Of course, it is starting to drift down here a little bit. So what I would do in this example is I would just cut the first five seconds. So I'd make a cut there using C, delete the last part of that. And then I would use this section for the cinema graph. So essentially, if I turn off the layer on the layer below, you can basically see this is the part of the video that we're using. And then we've got this layer underneath as the frozen layer. Now, like I mentioned at the start of this video, you don't have to just focus on liquid pouring. There are so many great examples of cinema graphs and you can get really creative with these. They make for really interesting social media posts. And if it makes your life easier, then I will make this footage available to you to download. So if you wanted to follow along with this exact footage, then just go ahead and click the link in the description below to download that footage. And then you can follow along with this tutorial. But there you go. Cinema graphs can be a little bit faffy in Premiere Pro. If you were doing this in After Effects, then what I would do is I would make a mask halfway through that liquid pouring use the puppet pin tool to move the top of that liquid to connect up with the top of the bottle and it would look a lot more realistic and a lot better. 
but the problem is Premiere doesn't have the puppet pin tool so we are quite limited and we have to just use masking and try and frame that up as best as we can. It is still possible though to make some really great looking cinema graphs inside of Premiere Pro using this technique. So feel free to get creative with these. They are really interesting and really unique. And like I said, they make for some really awesome and creative social media posts. So thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.